Warframe is suffering from the following trend. If it's not in Karnan, that means it's not very good or <laughs> the bird. And granted, while in Karnan weapons definitely have their own special level, that does not mean that fan favorites such as the Fullman Prime can't absolutely tear through Steel Path. Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be re-diving deeper into the Fullman Prime. As per the usual, we'll have an introductory level setup, as well as an endgame setup. That said, please bear in mind that my built-in guides usually take a more new player-friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Fullman Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Fullman Prime is the Mastery Rank 12 rifle with two fire modes. In primary fire mode, semi-automatic projectile based attack with infinite body punch through. The range, 23 meters. But while it may have 23 meters worth of range, the damage drop off starts at roughly here, 12 meters. Past this point, you will be losing some damage out of the projectile. If you use your secondary fire mode, the Warframe grabs the silencer and puts it underneath the weapon. This is Wisp's signature weapon. If you're gonna be using this one with Wisp, you're simply gonna be getting faster mode switching because apparently Wisp is good with her hand. Not important. In this mode, basically this is your standard assault rifle experience. This is hit scan attack, electric bullets. Now it may appear like it's a projectile based attack, but there's no travel time whatsoever. You're simply getting hit scan on your target. Did you notice something about the Fullman Prime, however? This one is one of those fancy recharge weapons. After you stop firing for 0.5 seconds, the weapon will start automatically reloading its entire AT magazine. Speaking about that magazine, in primary fire mode, you're gonna be consuming 10 ammo per shot, so effectively 8 shots, and in secondary fire mode, you're just gonna go 1 for 1. Mod capacity 60 out of 60, and if your comes with a measly 30 out of 30, you jump into actions and you plug in that auto king catalyst, but should you do it? At the end of the day, not everybody wants to waste Orokin Catalyst or Forma. By the way, for the weapon build I'm recommending you, you're only gonna need 2 to 3 Forma, depending on the mods that you have available to you. Here's the thing, this is not one of the best primary weapons in the game. It will not make a top 10. It might make a fan top 10, but objectively speaking, it's not one of the most powerful primary weapons in the game. That does not mean it cannot clear base level steel path without any issue, as I will demonstrate just a tad later. Here's the deal, it's a very cool rifle and it's a fan favorite. In my opinion, you should still experience the Fullman Prime, even though it's not incarnate. Fire rate of 2.17 in semi-automatic mode or projectile mode, which normally would be abysmal. However, the projectile has guaranteed impact procs. And tell me, my friends, what does guaranteed impact proc spell? That's right, internal bleeding. We're gonna have a conversation about internal bleeding and hunter munitions just a tad later. Magazine capacity of 80, but in primary fire mode, you're getting effectively 8 shots. Accuracy medium. <laughs> Trigger semi noise silent on this one. They're in this position of nada, so let's get this out of the way. It is not worth going out there and chasing a ribbon for the Fullman Prime. Yes, you will be able, mathematically speaking, to get a ribbon which is quote-unquote slotable on the weapon, but I would not waste my time. Not with a ribbon for the Fullman. Fall off between 12 and 24. Now, if you go to projectile, flight speed with terminal velocity this will be increased to 19.2 meters so it's definitely not a bad idea for your excellent slot critical chance by default 30 percent which is not bad with a 2.2 x critical multiplier impact and electricity by default again you are getting guaranteed impact procs in secondary fire mode a whole lot more fire rate at 9.33 same magazine as before but the accuracy is very high now with an automatic trigger critical chance even higher at 34 and higher critical multiplier at 2.4x status chance however at only 10 percent which does hurt the weapon if you don't get your procs from outside the weapon veterans will know exactly what i mean now this time you're not getting impact and electricity you are getting puncture and electricity and keep in mind that puncture will be helping you get those fantastic orange and red crits now let's have a look at a standard introductory level build damage restoration multi-shot with vigilante armaments and split chamber critical chance and critical damage for this a critical delay vital sense hunter munitions is on the weapon let's talk about that hunter munitions versus internal bleeding if you're gonna be using the weapon 
only in its projectile form, only in semi-automatic mode, then you go for internal bleeding over Hunter Munitions. However, Hunter Munitions will be applying both in normal and secondary fire mode. It's down to you. Are you going to be using the weapon in both modes? Hunter Munitions only in primary fire mode, internal bleeding only in secondary mode, Hunter Munitions again. So there you have it. You also got the 260-60 fire mods on the weapon, Malignant Force and Rhyme of the Rounds. Now, you do have an option slot on this one. It's Vigilante Armaments. Multi-shot helps truck stun with the weapon, as it does with most weapons. But if you're feeling comfortable with something, whatever else, simply swap this one out. Now, let's see how this one performs against... What would an MR12 player face? I think something like level 80s without the Steel Pal modifiers is appropriate. And we're going to be spawning the Grenier Battle Group because this one, theoretically, at least, should be a little bit more tougher. Level 100. Oh, that's a little bit overkill. First in normal fire mode, then we're going to do the secondary fire mode. Look at that. Look at that damage. And you know what? If the impact damage doesn't clear your target like it clears these little butchers and the bomb boards, then if you get a proc on your target, look at that. Two slashes, one viral, done. The targets are done. Always keep in mind, you have that infinite body punch roll on the weapon. Make good use of it, so careful how you aim. Not that it's a huge deal, again, the weapon will be recharging by itself, so at least you never have to worry about completely going bone dry on ammo, like fire rate enthusiasts would know all too well. We're gonna stimulate these guys one more time, but this time, secondary fire. Honestly, for normal level content, this is what I call normal level content. Level 100, 100-ish, sortie free basically, no steel path modifiers. This is what I believe to be normal level content for Warframe. And for that, I would use the automatic mode over the projectile mode. And this concludes the new player portion of the guide. This is definitely an interesting weapon for a newer player, and I highly recommend you give it a spin. But let's say you're not a new player. I got all the resources, I got all the mods, and I got the know and the how. Well, in this case, we're gonna change a couple of things. Well, a lot of things. Galvanized Aptitude is a must on this one. Galvanized Chamber, the Bane of the Murmur. Huh, why Bane of the Murmur? Well, we're gonna be fighting Murmur. Some of our damage is gonna be coming from the projectile making contact with a target. This is an exclusive primary fire mode build, which is why we have Infernal Bleeding on. And some of our damage is gonna be coming from that delicious slash proc generated by internal bleeding which is why we need the faction modifier if you still don't understand why faction modifiers double dip and why they're so important in damage over time builds especially click the cards are now for a full and detailed guide on 100 munitions trust me it touches on everything that you need to know so primary fire mode build internal bleeding is on fire rate is 1.73 careful with the fire rate so you get that x2 benefit and bane of the murmur is here again to further amplify the value of that slash proc and not only but let's say you hate faction modifiers. Honestly, they're a pretty lazy design decision. You can simply swap it out for more flat damage with serration. You do have flat damage on the build from Galvanized Aptitude, but a second source is not a bad idea. We're going to be fighting the Murmur because this is the latest content to be added to Warframe, and I believe this is what most of you guys are doing right now, which is why we have Radiated Reload. Strictly for the radiation, because the 40% reload does jack the rest should be pretty self-explained you got corrosive on the build made with infected clip plus the weapon's default electricity damage and frostbite interesting you got yourself critical damage and multi-shot one of the most powerful primary arcanes to date but how are you gonna proc it simple get yourself a diriga or whatever else sentinel you want and make sure that on your hellstrom which you should get you get to proc some frost procs this will work it doesn't work with primary blight for some reason but it does work with primary frostbite what else can we do to spruce this up? At the end of the day, this is not an incarnate weapon, so I want to give it every single chance it has at winning. Tell me, my friends, if you're gonna go slash, what should you do also? Vital. Where's my Vital? Not from the Sentinel, that one is gonna be proccing cold, so instead we're gonna be using Grendel's Nourish on Revenant. Yes, essentially I'm pulling out all the stops for this one. We're gonna be spawning in the Murmur group. This is meant to give you a more realistic outlook of what's gonna happen in an actual mission. Level 205, Steel Path modifiers enabled, no pause AI, no invincibility, nothing of the sort. We're strictly gonna be relying on our own build. Now let's see what this weapon can do. It's not stacked just yet, but even so, it's fully capable of annihilating essentially whatever stands before it. And granted, some of these murmur enemies aren't exactly all that tough, but these are still level 205, Steel Path modifier enemies, and the Pullman Chomp Room without any issue whatsoever. This is base level Steel Path, it's a survival mission. 
Now, a build centered around the primary fire mode of the Fallman, that glorious, infinite body punch for projectile will be easily clearing out the trash. But tell me, what happens when you're hitting something a bit more tough? I think we have a Necromite here somewhere. We had a Necromite. There, here he is. The tactic is take off its arms and then shoot it in the back, like so. It is a moment like this one where you, where I at least wish I built the weapon more generally for its secondary fire mode so I can switch around and then start doing my spray and pray. I also think we got an Acolyte, which would be an excellent test for us. We got all our buffs, I do believe we are fully stacked. It should perform pretty well versus an Acolyte. I think it's dead or something. I hit it. I hit it a couple of times. One more time. By my estimates, judging by that health bar, a single shot from the Fullman took about 45% of its HP, not counting what it did to the shield. This is the kind of performance you can expect out of the Fullman. Now granted, it is being helped out by outside buffs, but when it comes to a normal, non-incarnate weapon, I believe that is acceptable. So if this one shows up in Deep Archimedia, now you know exactly what you need to do to absolutely pet house. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, let me know in the comment section down below. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's gonna be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.